Hello everyone, welcome to the GOI Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on environmental geography. So in this session on environmental geography, we are going to look into biodiversity. So what is this biodiversity about? Is it just a single term or is it a combination of various other diversities as well? And why is it important? What is the need for conservation of biodiversity and how do we conserve biodiversity in the world as well as in India? So let's learn about it. But before we go ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about biodiversity, its concept and conservation aspects. So in this concept of biodiversity, important is the word bio itself and diversity. So what is this bio? It means biotic community. It means living component of ecosystem, right? So we are talking about the diversity. It means how much is the diversity in the space of these living components. So the concept and how we are trying to conserve these biodiversity, right? So in our biosphere, immense diversity or heterogeneity that we say, differences, right? The variety that we say exists not only at species level, but at all levels of biological organization, right? From the molecule, the cell level, the gene level to the ecosystem level. That is important. So biodiversity is the term popularized by whom? By sociobiologist Edward Wilson to describe an important phenomena that is the combined diversity at all the levels of biological organization. Now, when we say levels of biological organization, it is talking about levels of the development, succession. Remember these words, development, succession, and also scales, right? So these three words are involved when we say levels of biological organization. Now, when we elaborate these different levels, what we say? Biodiversity is the combination of three key words. It's not a single word biodiversity. Remember, it's about genetic diversity plus species diversity plus ecosystem diversity that we say ecological diversity. When we say these three things together, then it becomes biodiversity. So if you want to do some biodiversity study, what you have to do? You have to look at the genetic diversity of that particular species at genetic level, at gene pool level, right? Remember in biogeography, we have already learned about the centers of origin and the gene pool around the world. So we have to look at that diversity. Then we look at the species, right? So at species level, for example, Western Ghats have greater amphibian species diversity than Eastern Ghats, right? So species level, what is the variety of species in a particular area? And then at ecological diversity, at ecosystem level. For example, if you look at a particular ecosystem like desert or rainforest or mangroves or coral reefs, wetlands, estuaries and alpine meadows, they have greater ecosystem values in terms of diversity. They have variety of species. So if you look into this, one ecological diversity area will have several species. One species will have several genetic diversity. For example, India has more than 50,000 genetically different strains of rice, 1,000 varieties of mango and so on. So this is what we are looking at is a diverse system in terms of right from genetic level to the ecosystem level. And that together makes it a biodiversity. All these things are related to biotic component, genetic species as well as ecosystem or ecological diversity. So that's important as a concept to remember. Now, when we talk about biodiversity, why are we concerned here in environmental geography? We are concerned because there is a huge burden of our practices on these biodiversity features, right? So there is a loss of biodiversity, degradation happening, right? And endangered species are increasing day by day. We are running into the sixth mass extinction as we know. Right. So biological wealth of our planet has been declining rapidly. And that's why we are concerned. And the accusing finger is clearly to who? To us, to human activities. So if we are accused, we need to work out and prove ourselves not guilty. Remember, so the last 20 years alone, if you see, we have witnessed the loss of about 27 vital species. So just in 20 years, right? So that's important. So presently, 12% of all bird species, 23% of all mammal species, 32% of all amphibian species, and 31% of all gymnosperms. Remember, gymnosperms are those plants whose seed is naked, for example, pine trees and others, right? So they are species in the world we are facing the threat of extinction. Human has a red book 
Remember, you and Red Book is having the list of all those threatened species, endangered species, and also the extinct species. So remember that we are looking into a world where human beings are aggravating it, the loss of biodiversity. That's why in anthropogenic scenario, in Anthropocene, we are looking into this huge loss of biodiversity, right? That's why we are concerned about it. Then let's go to the reasons, the causes behind it, biodiversity loss. So if you look into this habitat loss and fragmentation, now the loss of habitat, it means a home for a particular species because of our activities. It is being fragmented. Land use change is basically what we are talking about. We have changed the land use in every biome. Remember the lectures on biome then when we talked about the problems of equatorial rainforest, we talked about Mediterranean, we talked about tundra. Everywhere we find habitat loss and fragmentation happening because of over exploitation of resources everywhere. Right. So we already have several examples. Then alien species invasions also happen time to time. For example, we see the Nile perch introduced into Lake Victoria in East Africa led to the extinction of ecologically unique assemblage of more than 200 species. So many times without understanding the ethos, the logic behind planting a particular tree in a particular ecosystem, we do what? We do some plantations just to save environment with a good intent, but we don't understand that that may be an alien species for that particular ecosystem. We always give example of eucalyptus plantation in India. So eucalyptus, remember, it is an alien species to Indian subcontinent. And what happened? Many places where eucalyptus were planted without the knowledge of this ecosystem dynamic, lots of places turn into degraded lands because eucalyptus absorbs lots of water, right? So loss of habitat because of an alien species can also occur and there can be co-extinctions. Remember, co-extinction means extinction of, you know, more than one species at the same time. So when a species become extinct, the plant and animal species associated to that particular also starts to get extinct because they are interrelated with each other. They survive. Remember ecosystem principle principles of ecology, the coexistence principle. It is linked here. So that's important. So when a host fish species, for example, gets extinct, its unique assemblage of parasites also meets the same fate. So remember, it's not just about that one species just or one particular uh, plant got extinct or animal got extinct. It's about the interlinkages because we are talking about a community which is interlinked. Right. And it's here in terms of ecology that we must understand that everything in the system keeps rotating mineral energy. So that's where we understand these biogeochemical cycles. We understand the loss of biodiversity and integral part of the ecology. Right. So that's where we are talking about the causes. Then look at the biodiversity conservation aspect. Now, when we say conserving it, it means we are utilizing the resources from biodiversity at the same time, making sure that they do not go extinct. It means their survival together with our survival in terms of being dependent on biodiversity for resources. That is called conservation aspect. Right. So Earth's rich biodiversity is vital for our survival that we already know. And direct benefits and indirect benefits. We rip both of them. So direct benefits like food, fiber, firewood, pharmaceuticals, so many things. And indirect benefit what we get is pollination, pest control, climate moderation, flood control. All these things are basically nothing but ecosystem services. We are getting this free of cost, these ecosystem services, right? So we have a moral responsibility that is important to understand. It's like a fundamental duty right to take a good care of earth's biodiversity and pass it on to the good order to our next generation that's where we say intergenerational equity right and intragenerational equity which is the basic principle of sustainable development right so in the next lecture when we talk about sustainable development we'll be discussing the same thing that when we are using something we are consuming something we must understand that we ensure its longevity for the next generation we must ensure its continuity for the next generation. We should not consume everything irrespective of what happens in future, right? That's our moral responsibility. So in conservation, we have two aspects. One is called in situ conservation, which is in situation. Remember like weathering in situ, the word. So in situation means where it is originally located in its own environment, we conserve it. Right. We make plants so that it stays in the same environment where it grows right? for a plant or animal species and it stays there only and we protect it from outside. 
right that's how it is in situ or on site conservation that's important in terms of protected areas we declare right so what is the advantage the advantage is that it remains in the own motherly environment right but the disadvantage is if in situ conservation is that it requires a large area and it minimizes the space for inhibiting human population now remember the problem is this is not in disadvantage if you see so but because of our growing population our requirement for land is increasing and if we conserve too many things in situ what will happen the expansion or our development will be hindered so what we say if we have to construct a road what you do you take some land and then you construct a road but both the sides you leave the green spaces so development together with environment we try and plan out at the minimum loss but remember this is one disadvantage of in situ conservation if you talk about and then following areas can be set aside for in situ so remember national park and wildlife sanctuaries you must have heard these words then for example yellowstone in usa was established as one of the first national parks in the world 1872 and the royal near sydney australia were chosen because of their scenic beauty recreational values these were the first step then un has recognized more than about 1 lakh 2100 protected areas covering more than 18.8 million km square covering 11.5% of earth's land surface that's important and that was in 2003 so there are more than 41997 it means about 42000 protected areas already in the world that fulfills the norms of IUCN international union for conservation of nature i would recommend all the viewers to please go to the IUCN website once for sure and look into the reports of this particular in situ conservation if you can find out then look into the marine protected areas since 1986 the iucn has been promoting this that marine ecosystem is as important so let's protect the areas so many areas have been declared like that then you have biosphere reserves we already know this international man and biosphere reserve program united nation environment program so it represents certain natural biomes which are very unique right which are nowhere else in the world so Remember concept of bio reserve biosphere reserve was launched in 1975 as part of UNESCO's man and biosphere program so UNESCO's man and biosphere program not UNEP so UNESCO's program dealing with conservation of ecosystems and genetic resources contained therein all these important aspects right and then comes ex situ it means we are taking something from the natural environment to conserve them we are putting it to a particular environment which we have made off site right for example botanical gardens zoo gene bank seed bank tissue culture cryo preservation right so we have already the list of seed bank gene banks vitro gene banks dna bank network right dna bank networks so all these things are constructed in order to protect these particular species which are now going downgrading so we are taking them from the environment and we are putting them under a particular conservation zone right off site so these are the important points now let's talk about indian scenario as well so national biodiversity act was passed in 2002 and it was finally implemented in 2009 if you see as our action plan right and we have a huge biodiversity in india and we are also agrarian community in india predominantly agricultural community so policy makers must realize here that sustainable utilization of biodiversity is must in terms of indian con indian scenario for developmental planning projects right so when we say in situ conservation in india we have protected areas right they are basically demarcation of biodiversity in each area through the climatic and physiological conditions so main parameter is climate and physiology remember we have so many climatic zones in india physiological conditions so some protected areas for example the cold desert area ladakh and spiti area this is where i did my phd my research is on ladakh and spiti so i have made some documentaries also if you have not watched you can go to the playlist right and you can watch the playlist on this particular geo conservation which i have made the documentaries on cold desert ecosystem hot desert thar saline swampy areas like sundarban and one of kutch tropical moist deciduous as far as like western ghats and northeast these are the protected areas right so more than about 37000 protected areas are already there throughout the world and national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves are what we know them right world conservation monitoring center 
reports that India has more than 581 protected areas in our country in C2 conservation, right? And for example, national parks in India under Section 35 of Wildlife Protection Act that was passed in 1972. So the purpose was to actually propagate or develop wildlife where it is situated in the same sphere. Right, not change its location. So, biological park Nandan Kanan in Odisha, Corbett National Park in Nanital UP, then you have Kaziranga in Assam, Hazaribagh, Bandavgarh, Bandipur, Kanha, and you can go into the list of these. Right, so these are certain national parks in India which are important as in situ example in situ conservation for biodiversity. Then we have several biodiversity or wildlife sanctuary as well. So for protection of biodiversity, we have wildlife sanctuaries whose main purpose is to protect, but at the same time also allow tourism or recreation, right? So economy plus ecology concept. So that's where we have sanctuaries. In India, almost 543 wildlife sanctuaries are there and 50 are specialized in tigers. Project Tiger since 1973 been initiated, right? And some of them, examples in terms of sanctuaries are Nandan Kanan Zoological Park, Chilika, Nilapattu, then you have Salim Ali Bird Sanctuary, then Delhi Wildlife Sanctuary, Dara Wildlife Sanctuary, and there's a huge list of it, right? Then we go to the biosphere reserves. Now, Ministry of Environment and Forest. Now, remember, do visit the website of MOEF, Ministry of Environment. Ministry of Environment and Forest, which has notified 18 biosphere reserves in India. And it is part of World Network of Biosphere Reserve, that is UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program. So it is MAB program. And remember, Man and Biosphere Program. And its main objective is what? To preserve the genetic diversity and uniqueness, traditional lifestyle of inhabitant. Right? These are the important things that a biosphere reserve protects. And it allows very few and limited regularized tourists in terms of the recreation facilities. Some of the examples in India, Nanda Devi, Manas, Tihang, Dibang, Gulf of Manar, Nilgiri, Sundabans, Panchmadi, Great Nicobar, Kanzindanga. So all these are part of the biosphere reserves. Right? So what you can do is you can map all these aspects in India and you can look into these particular zones in India which are in situ zones and then also locate some ex situ conservation zones as well. So community reserves are another in situ zones. Remember the community reserves are what? Where individuals actually or a community volunteer to conserve wildlife in its habitat, right? So it's kind of a people's initiative. So for example, Keshapur Chamb Gurdaspur, Punjab. Remember, Conservation Reserve India's first community reserve was created. Then you have Gogabil. It's an Oxbow Lake in Bihar's Katihar district. It has been declared as state's first community reserve. So this is on the basis of community. So community is in terms of compliance with the state government. They are protecting that land and that particular biodiversity zones. Right. So that's important. And when we go to XC2. Then again, we have botanical gardens and zoos. Remember, Indian Botanical Garden in Havra, West Bengal, 200 years old. Then in Noida also, we have Botanical Garden of Indian Republic. Then we have gene banks at different places in India, right? So National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resource at Karnal, Haryana is very famous. You have National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources in Lucknow, which is very famous. Then you have cryopreservation. It means using low temperatures, freezing preservation. Right for protection of gene pool. So what you have here is meristem, zygotic, somatic embryos, pollens, protoplast cells. All these are preserved for a long time using liquid nitrogen. Right. So that's important in terms of X C two. So now when we have learned in details about the biodiversity, its various need and conservation aspects various examples from world in India. In the sessions to come, we'll be talking about one of the most cited and one of the most important aspects in terms of environment that is about sustainable development. So stay tuned, stay safe, all the best wishes.